rectangular column of cross section 300 into 200 mm and length of the column is 3 meter. Find slenderness ratio when both ends are pinned, joined. Number two, when both ends are fixed. So here the column and conditions are given, they are different. So for this both the cases we need to find a slenderness ratio. So let us see how we can solve this numerical. Let us start by jotting down the given data. So in given we have rectangular cross section cross section is given equal to 300 into 200 mm length of the column is given l is given equal to 3 meter now we need to find the slenderness ratio so slenderness ratio ratio is denoted by a symbol lambda we need to find this okay now the conditions are given when both ends are pin joint and the second one when both ends are fixed now the for the first case when it is saying that both ends are pin joint now the other name for hinged ends are also known as pin joint okay so let us start by finding its uh, moment of inertia first because to find slenderness ratio what is slenderness ratio slenderness ratio is the ratio of effective length of the column divided by the radius of gyration okay k so we need to find le and k to find le first case is when both ends are ends are pin joint okay so pin joint are also hinged okay so when both ends are hinged effective length le will be equal to l which is equal to 3 it is given in meter so let me convert into mm 3 into 10 to the power 3 mm now how do we find radius of gyration k k will be equal to root over of i minimum which is moment of minimum moment of inertia divided by the area now how do you find mo minimum moment of inertia the rectangular section is given so it is a rectangular column okay so for this b is given b is given 300 d is given 200 m okay so uh, moment of inertia is for this rectangular section is bd cubed by 12 divided by area is b into d right so from here we get b how much is b 300 so Now in this case, you are taking the minimum moment of inertia about uh, if the minimum moment of inertia comes across i x x is coming i minimum, then we take this value. If the mi moment of inertia is coming less in about i y y axis, then that we take it. Now along i x x, minimum moment of inertia will be d cubed by 12 will be equal to uh, B is 300 into 200 cube by 12. This you will get a value equal to 2 into 10 raised to power 8 mm raised to power 4. Okay. Now next, if you find it along I, Y, Y axis, it will be DB cube by 12. So here, when you do DB cube by 12, D is 200, B is 300. So 200 into 300 cube by 12, you will be getting value equal to 45, 45 into 10 raised to power 45 into 10 raised to power 7 mm raised to power 4 now compare which one is smaller 
this value is smaller 2 into 10 raised to power 8 so that's why we take this smaller minimum minimum is coming 2 into 10 raised to power 8 and this one is coming more 45 into 10 raised to power 7 right so we take the minimum value okay so the minimum value is coming equal to 2 into 10 raised to the power 8 divided by b into d area is 300 into 200 so from here k minimum this is k minimum will be coming equal to 57.7 mm okay now from here slenderness ratio will be equal to le is 3 into 10 raised to power 3 divided by minimum k minimum is 57.7 from here you will get equal to 51.96 so this is the value of slenderness ratio when both ends are hinged now for the second question for the second condition when both ends are fixed so in this case effective length le will be equal to l by 2 so how much is l l is 3 meter divided by 2 you get 1.5 meter now convert this meter to mm i'll get 1.5 into 10 to the power 3 mm okay now let's find lambda lambda will be equal to ratio of effective length divided by k minimum so k minimum the value we, that we got here will remain same so l e is 1.5 into 10 to the power 3 divided by 57.7 so from here you get equal to 25.98 okay so this is the slenderness ratio so i hope this numerical is clear let's solve the second numerical so for this if the limit of proportionality of steel is 250 megapascal and modulus of elasticity is 200 gpa Determine the slenderness ratio at which Euler's formula for a fixed end column can be used. So let us get started with this numerical also. Now, this numerical is the examples on limitation of Euler's formula. Right, so here we basically need to find we need to find limiting slenderness ratio limiting slenderness ratio which is l by k minimum we need to find this so we basically need to find this limiting slenderness ratio in this numerical and this is the example of limitation of Euler's formula right so now we first need to find whatever uh, let us first write down whatever is given in the question so we have a yield stress right so yield stress of steel is given equal to given equal to 250 megapascal okay which is equal to 250 into 10 raised to power 3 newton per mm square and next what is given value of e young's modulus e is given 200 gpa which will be equal to 200 into 10 raised to power 3 newton per mm square again okay and now by using a crippling load by Euler's formula is given by P equals to pi square EI minimum by LE square right now from here if I if I uh, replace this I minimum 
by pi square e equals to a k square right from the relation i equals to a k square i am replacing this i from the relation uh, the relation i equals to a k square so this is from a radius of gyration relation so i am replacing i with a k square here divided by l by 2 the whole square this l by 2 square is for the condition the condition for this um, n condition for this question given is for a uh, fixed end column okay so both the ends are fixed end so for fixed end effective length le will be equal to l by 2 okay so l by 2 the whole square now from here if you further solve this equation it will be equal to so down here l squared it will be l squared divided by 2 squared will be equal to 4 now if i reciprocate it i can send this 2 which is in denominator to numerator here so after squaring it 2 square will be 4 so i'll sending i'm sending it into the numerator which will be 4 pi square okay into e and i have area here now here you have k square and down there also you have l square right so send these two together so if i send this k square to numerator i'll have l by this k will be coming down there k square so this is what i will have now from here this k here is the minimum value of radius of gyration okay now by using this this uh, formula here euler's crippling stress sigma c is given by force by area now p we got equal to this much so let us if we put the value of p this p here 4 pi square e a by l by k minimum the whole square divided by area so this area area will get cancelled so remaining i have only 4 pi square e by l by k minimum the whole square so i only have this one right now in the in the given question the yield stress of the um the yield stress of the steel is given equal to 250 megapascal now for the euler's formula to be valid okay so for for Euler's formula to be valid valid sigma c should be less than or equal to 250 megapascal right because the yield stress here is given 250 megapascal here so my sigma c is equal to this value here right now if i neglect um let me write this one 4 pi square e by l by k minimum the whole square this is my sigma c value should be less than or equal to 250 right now from here if i make this as l k minimum the whole square if i bring this to denominator this one will go to the right hand side which will be this side and i'll have it here 4 pi square e by 250 okay now from here if you further solve it l by k minimum will be equal to now i'm removing this square so if i remove this square 
it will be here more than or equal to the sign will change here only i'm sorry the sign will change here when i send this when i when i take this l by k minimum up and then when i send this to this side the sign will change it will be more than or equal to so i have more than or equal to here root over of 4 pi square into the value of e is given equal to 200 into 10 raised to power 3 divided by 250 so from here i get l by k minimum will be more than or equal to 177.71 okay so this is what i am getting so what does this mean thus it means that limiting value of slenderness ratio is 177.71 this is the limiting value of slenderness ratio now if the slenderness ratio is less than this value then the Euler's analysis will not be valid Euler's formula will not be valid so it means that limiting limiting value of slenderness ratio is 177.71 and if the slenderness ratio is less than 177.71 then the Euler's then Euler's formula Euler's analysis or Euler's uh, crippling stress or Euler's we can say analysis analysis will not be valid okay so this is what it means this value so the we had to find limiting slenderness ratio this is the limiting slenderness ratio and we found it equal to this much so i hope this numerical is clear coming to the third numerical Calculate the slenderness ratio for which Euler's crippling load and Rankine's failure load is of same magnitude. If E is equal to 200 megapascal, A, here A is the Rankine's constant, is given equal to 1 by 7500, sigma C is equal to 300 newton per mm square. Now let us calculate the slenderness ratio. Now for this numerical, we need to find slenderness ratio. Lambda equals to question mark. And what else is given? It says calculate slenderness ratio for which Euler's crippling load and Rankine's failure load is of same magnitude. It is saying Euler's crippling load P E this is Euler's crippling load and Rankine's failure load is of same magnitude so they are same which means it is equal to P R so P R here is the Rankine's failure load okay now the value of E is given equal to Young's more or less is given equal to 200 mega Pascal which means it is 200 Newton per mm square and the value of sigma c is given equal to 300 Newton per mm square now we need to equate p equals to pr in order to find this slenderness ratio okay so let us first find by putting by finding the Euler's crippling load so Euler's crippling load crippling load PE now PE will be equal to pi square EI by LE the whole square okay 
so now this is the formula Euler's crippling load right now I will be um, replacing I which is moment of inertia I by a k square okay this is the relationship when you find a radius of gyration right so let me put it here it will be pi square e a k square divided by l e the whole square right now if you send this k down there you will get pi square e is equals to 200 so into 200 a divided by le by k the whole square okay so you you your pe is coming equal to this much now let us find rankin's failure load so rankin's failure load pr will be equal to the formula is pr equals to fc a divided by 1 plus a le by k whole square this is the formula for rankin's failure load okay now let us put the values here if we put the value fc the, the value of sigma c that is given here is equals to fc okay so fc is 300 a divided by 1 plus the value of alpha okay uh, the value of alpha which is Rankine's constant is already given which I forgot to mention here it is given in the question and it is given equal to 1 by 7500 okay so here alpha will be equal to 1 by 7500 le by k the whole square you will get this now by equating pe equals to pr if we equate the two crippling loads for um, Euler's formula and then for Rankine's formula we get PE we got this much so we have 200 pi square A divided by LE by K the whole square equals to PR is equal to this much 300 A divided by 1 plus 1 by 7500 L e by k square so I have this right so I can cancel area and area here now let me solve for this one okay before I solve for this one let me assume that let L e by k square be equal to x now I'm gonna put the value of L e by k square x here and here also le by k square x okay so i'm telling that let it be equals to x so what will what will i get it will be 200 pi square divided by x will be equal to 300 divided by 1 plus 1 by 7500 into x this is what i will get now let me solve this portion first okay so when I solve this portion it will be equal to PE I have PE I have 200 pi square by X equal to 300 divided by 1 plus 1 by 7500 X now first I'm gonna solve the for this portion here so let's see how we can do it let this be as it is which is 200 pi square by x equals to 300 divided by now let me solve this one okay so here to add this one and 1 by 7500 x 
the denominator for these two will be 7500 right so here I can imagine that there is a 1 down here so I need to make its denominator also equal to 7500 because I have taken 7500 for the denominator so what will I have to do into 7500 in denominator and even in numerator 7500 so 7500 into 1 is equal to 7500 right so here the denominator is already 7500 so here I need to only multiply with 1 and in numerator also multiply with 1 so I have 1 into x into 1 will be equal to plus this plus sign here plus x now if I further solve this only for this I'll be getting equal to 300 now if I send this 7500 to the numerator here it will be 300 into 7500 I've sent this to numerator and what is remaining only 7500 plus x is remaining now if I equate this two again so it will be 200 pi square divided by x equals to 300 into 7500 divided by 7500 plus x this is one term this is one term this is one term now if I cross multiply it if I cross multiply it I'll get 200 pi square into 7500 plus x here equal to 300 into 7500 will be coming equal to 22,000 it will be coming equal to 2250000 times this x into x okay now if I further solve this one here it will be 200 pi square into 7500 will be equal to 1 one four eight zero four four zero six point six plus one nine seven three point nine two x this is two hundred pi square into seven five zero 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 is this much and two hundred pi square into x is equals to this much okay and this will be equal to two two five zero 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 x now these two are like terms so if I send this like terms together I will get if I send this this side it will be 1480440 will be equal to 225000x now if I send this to this side it will be here it is plus so it will be minus now 1973.92x now from here again I get 1804406.6 will be equal to if I minus this value here you get 2248026.08x now from here x will be equal to 1484406.6 divided by 2248026.08 will give you value equal to 6.58 okay now initially initially we replaced x with le by k the whole square so if i replace this x as le by k the whole square the value will be equal to 6.58 right now just the slenderness ratio from here will be le by k now this square if i send it this side it will be root over of 6.58 which will be coming equal to 2.57 so this is the slenderness ratio okay so we have found the slenderness ratio also i hope this numerical is clear so let us solve another numerical this is the last numerical for today's session. Let us read its statement 
for applying Euler's formula, find the minimum value of the slenderness ratio for mild steel strut with both ends fixed. Check the yield stress as 315 MPa and E as 210 GPa. Round your answer to the nearest 5. So let us see how we can solve this numerical. Let us get started. And this is the last numerical for today's session. Now again, for this numerical, we need to find minimum value of slenderness ratio. Okay. So what do we need to find? We need to find minimum value of slenderness ratio lambda we need to okay which is l by k minimum this is the minimum value of slenderness ratio this we need to find right and we need to find it for mild steel strut and for this mild steel strut the end condition of this mild steel strut is that both ends are fixed so here both ends are fixed this is the condition given and the yield stress of this still is given equal to yield stress is given equal to 315 megapascal okay and e is given equal to 210 gpa which will be equal to 210 into 10 raised to power 3 newton per mm square right now let us find by putting it in a euler's formula formula p is given equal to pi square ei pi l e square right now i'm again gonna replace this i with i with a k square so if i do that i'll be getting p equals to pi square e a k square divided by now this effective length here will be equal to l by 2 why l by 2 l by 2 is the effective length for the column end condition when both the ends are fixed so we have l by 2 the whole square now if i send this 2 to numerator here 2 square will be 4 so if i send this 2 up there it will be 4 pi square e a by i'm sending this k down there so l by k k is square here and l is also square so i can do whole square here okay now let us equate it now uh, euler's crippling stress right euler's crippling stress sigma c is given by p by a right so how much is sigma c equals to how much is p p is equals to this much which is 4 pi square e a by l by k square divided by area so area and area get cancelled so what what am i left with i am left with 4 pi square e by l by k the whole square okay i'm left with this now if i equate now it says that the column material cannot withstand compressive stress more than the yield stress right so yield stress given 
is equal to 315 megapascal so let us equate this value this is the crippling stress so 4 pi square e by l by k the whole square should be less than or equal to 315 now if i send this 4 pi square e to this side i'll have i'll get something like l by k minimum okay this should be k minimum whole square now this sign is gonna change okay when i send when i send 4 pi square e to the right hand side the sign will change it will be more than or equal to now will be more than or equal to 4 pi square e by 315 okay now let us put the values L by K minimum will be equal uh, more than or equal to now I'm removing this root also so if I remove it I'll have a root square here so 4 pi square into the value of E is given equal to 210 into 210 into 10 raised to power 3 divided by 315 so from here you get l by k minimum which is this is the minimum slenderness ratio this one minimum slenderness ratio will come less than or equal to 162.23 or approximately we can say it is 160 okay so it it means what does this mean it means that the minimum value of slenderness ratio is 160 okay the minimum value is coming 160 and for the Euler's formula to be valid the slenderness ratio for mild steel column should be greater than or equal to it should be greater than or equal to 160 the Euler's formula will not be valid if the slenderness ratio is less than 160 if it comes 159 then it will not be valid Euler's a formula will not be valued so this is the limitation of Euler's formula so I hope you got the meaning of this value here okay this is the last numerical for this session I'll see you with more numerical in next session